Anything is permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for me, it shall be permanent. Whoa, whoa. It must be permanent. Whoa, whoa. It must be permanent. Whoa. What the Lord has done for us, whoa. it must be permanent. Woo woo, it must be permanent, yeah, it must be permanent, woo. What the Lord has done for us, it is permanent. Let's go to the next verse. Okay, so this is verse 27. Okay. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done. Oh, gee, I've just lost my passage. Sorry. Uh, I'll have to get someone else to read it. I've just lost my page. Okay. And the people answered him. In this where are you? Zelina, where are you? Zelina, what verse are you? I'm on verse 27. Verse 27. Hold on. Let me make sure that I'm there with you. Mm, 25. Okay. They have respect to the man. Okay. Who is this? All right. Verse 27. Let's go. And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who killed him. Okay. Continue. Okay, listen there. You see that? Eliab, the first one, whom Samuel saw and thought that should be the king. See, I know that you are a naughty boy. I know you are insane. <laughs> I know that you are a proud guy. Let's listen to that. Let's, let's hear. Let's hear what he's saying. Please, can you read that again? That is so sweet. I love it. Now, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man. Yep. And, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. You have come down here to see the battle. You were supposed to bring the food, leave it in the camp there with the keeper there, and, and ask him about us and go. But you ran in among the soldiers and you are asking them questions. What is a little boy? A teenager like you, what are you doing here? This is not, this is battle. David, can you hear me? This is war. This is for men, it's not for boys. Okay? This is not slingshot business. This is not ship business. People do die. Why are you asking questions that are for military people to ask? We, your brothers, didn't ask that question. And you have come here to come and see the battle? What's wrong with you? Are you mad? Get out of here and go home. This is not for kids, please. David, we are not joking here. This is not for kids. Are these not the same brothers of his... Is it not the same Eliab who witnessed when 
the same David was anointed, who saw the Spirit begin to roar in him that day, from that day forward. You see how it goes. Even members of your family will not understand the predicament that they are in. They think that because they are soldiers, because he was tall and beautiful and strong, he wasn't made a king. It's possible that his brothers were just laughing at Samuel. What is this old man doing? You are coming to make a king. Are you serious? And us who are soldiers, you didn't make a king. You are making a, a little boy in the bush a king. Are you serious? So it's possible his brothers were laughing at him. Bush king, look at you. <laughs> you are to sit on the throne of Israel. Really? It's possible that Samuel has lost his mind because of all his, um, all the, all the, all, all the problems that he has been having with Saul has made him an, 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 an elderly man that has lost his mind. Because Saul was doing things and telling people things against Samuel. People were listening to Saul than they were listening to Samuel, the prophet. Here we go. Please, please, please stop breathing into the phone. Stop sleeping. If you feel tired, if you feel sleepy, please go away from the conference. If you feel tired, go away or go and find something to drink and, and keep it with you. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 29. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Okay. Verse 30. Then he turned from him toward another. Well, he said to him, What have I done now? Mm -hmm. There is a problem at hand here. Do I not have the right to inquire about what's going on? After all, I came here to come. Daddy sent me to come and see how things are going on here. That's why I came. And now I've seen what is happening. Go ahead. Verse 30. Verse 30. Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And the, these people answered him as the first ones did. Okay. Because David was surprised that among the seasoned soldiers and commanders and captains, and even the king himself, why is the king giving his duty to somebody else? And why is there no soldier in all of Israel to defy this man back? To go out there and fight him? David was surprised that the people who have the power the supreme power of the earth in them and following them and not doing anything with it. He was shocked. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Verse 31. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. Okay, listen. Listen. So David began to speak. I'm going to take this man. What the king said he's going to do, he better do it. I'm going to take him down. That's why Eliab was very unhappy with David. Why are you doing this to disgrace our family? To go out there and be slain like a little rabbit before a giant. Are you serious? This is going to be a disgrace in all of Israel? And Eliab was right to think like that intellectually. Your little brother has zeal without knowledge. So pretty soon, all this time, nobody has offered to take up the challenge of both Goliath or the challenge of Saul. 
Goliath is looking for an Israelite to come and fight him. Saul has delegated his duty of a king going to fight another king. Lord with lords. Before lords. Nobody has among Saul's Saul soldiers, Saul's generals, no one has offered to go out and fight. And for the first time, someone in Israel is saying, I am willing to deal with him. And everybody were looking at this boy. Who is this? A boy with a slingshot? What weapon do you have? Do you really know your God? Because God is going to permit an atmosphere, an event, and he is going to allow things to happen that will make you invite him in earnest. You will vow either you win or you die. That's what Esther did. I am going there. What is happening to me? I'm going to shut down everything. I'm going to be in your presence. If I die there, let me die. Or you deliver me. That's how ancient people do it. And David said, I'm ready to go. I will take him on. I cannot stand here and hear him say what he said. And I'm ashamed of all of you. All of you, I'm ashamed of all of you that you stand there as an Israelite, as sons and daughters of Israel. All of Israel, you've heard these stories. And all of you men stood there and hear this man cursing you out, cursing your fathers and mothers out, and none of you did something about it. And when people began to hear this, they reported it to the king. Let's see what the king did. Verse 32. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. There you go. Just stop, 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 stop. He took a boy who had the Holy Ghost, a different kind of Holy Ghost, to know that that man has the Ghost, but not the Holy Ghost. This man has been cursing Israel's army and the people of Israel for 40 days until he has demoralized them, trashed their mind. He has destroyed their self-confidence. And David was the first to spot it. He knew it. He knew that as they are, even if they are well-trained soldiers, fear has already crippled them. It took a teenager to say no. Before the king will speak, David spoke. Don't wait for someone who is in place of authority address you. He himself could not address the issue. He's coming to come and teach you. We think that because people are highly educated, wealthy, they got it all. They need what you got for them to be able to keep and protect what they got and to make more. Do not allow anybody's mind to fail him. It took a boy to start to build the self-confidence of men, of matured men who had families and who had kids as old as David or older. It took a boy to say this word. Nobody was saying, not even the king was encouraging the soldiers. Read again what David said to the king. 32. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Do not let your heart fail you. Because if your mind fail you, if your spirit fail you, then your body will fail you. David knew it. These people cannot go to war like this. Is this the kind of soldiers that we have? These are well-trained soldiers. 
but their heart has already failed them. 33. Your servant will go. Number one, you see what David is saying? Number one, he built boldness, self-confidence, power. Number four, your servant is going to fight him. I love this. Your servant is going to fight him. He will go and fight with this Philistine. Say so none of you want to go. Go ahead. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You hear that? People are going to discourage you on your way to success. You are a youth. You are a young boy. I myself cannot fight him. And you say you are going to go and fight him? He has been a man of war from his youth. That's all he does is fight, 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 fight. He's a seasoned fighter and he's a giant. He's a lord of the Philistines. He's a champion. I can assure you that Saul consulted with his advisors and said, Who is I know this is this look like a, a clown. I know who he is. He's the one that plays harp for me. He plays, he's my musician, he's my palace entertainer. Because people start asking Saul, who is this boy? So he's my palace uh, entertainer. He's the son of Jesse, of Ephrat in Bethlehem. His brothers are, are my soldiers. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. We'll try to talk him to go back to his father. Or to come and play music for me when he comes back, you know. He went to go and look after his father's sheep. And from there he will come back to me. And here is the matter we have here. I do not want to be held responsible for the death of a, a young boy. Everybody will blame me, you know? That's not fair. So they had their meeting and tried to persuade David out of this. They tried to talk him out of this. But let me tell you what was really going on behind the scene. Why? You see, because David had the Holy Ghost, he immediately understood the situation. He knew exactly what was happening. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God was rousing in him. He began, when he saw what Goliath said, the wrath of God, the anger of God, the judgment of God entered into him. He began to carry what we call divine judgment, divine anger, divine justice, divine warfare. This is not given to just anybody. It is given to those who ask for the kind of anointing that I've been talking about. The anointing for life, for success, and for warfare. Many of you just want anointing for luxury, anointing for money, anointing to speak in tongues and prophesy over rubbish. And this guy also received an anointing for warfare, for battle. That's what he received. Hallelujah. Tell me about it. Saul is trying to discourage him, but already he's carrying 
holy anger. Let's go to the next one. Florence, are you able to read now? Okay, verse 30. Selena, tell him where you stop. Is it verse 34? Continue. He began to give him an example of what happened when he was in the in the bush. Verse thirty-five. Mm -hmm. And and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Okay. Listen to this. When did this begin to happen? When did David begin, or when did he begin to kill lions and bears? When do you think that began? When he was a shepherd, when he sat in a sheep. Who is on this line? Yeah, we are on a world conference. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Paris. Who is speaking? This is Tara from Texas. Yeah, there's a world conference happening right now. All right, let's continue. When did you guys think Saul has never killed a lion? David brothers have never killed a lion or a bear. A, 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 a boy, a teenager, has been killing lions and bears. Listen. There are two people we hear in the Bible who kill lions. Who are there? Samson. Huh? Samson and who? And David. And when did they start killing lions? What happened to them so that they can kill lions? Because a human being does not stand a chance of fighting a lion. Except you have a gun to shoot him from afar. Or you guys are many or professional people who can use their spear and spear lions. There are people who can do that. They throw their javelin from afar on lions. Poisonous javelin. He hit the lion, he just crushes the lion. Or the tiger or the bear. The professional, well-trained people, hunters, who do that. Some goes with dangerous bows and arrow and hide in ambush and shoot and kill the lion. Or some carries a net, the lion charges against them, they throw it over the lion and that's it. Different ways they do it. These are well-skilled professional people. But outside that, men goes in group to kill such dangerous animals with guns or with their own native weapons. If you are going alone, you must have very good gun to blast them to pieces. And you have to stay very safe to shoot them. Because those are wild beasts. When did Samson and David begin to kill lions and bears? When did they begin to do that? Because one thing happened in their life, in their lives, and from that time on, they began to take on devils, humans, and wild beasts. We are talking about supernatural warfare. Because somebody, some days, somebody will break into something that belongs to you and something will roll up in you and you will take down a man or a woman far more bigger and greater than you and put them on the floor. Okay. 
What is the one thing that came? What is the one thing that Samson had, David had, that made them with their bare hand or with a slingshot or with a little club? The anointing. Who is shouting the anointing? Kachumo. Thank you, my sister. None of them ever went near a lion until they received the anointing, the Holy Ghost for battles. So here you are seeing that it's not just something that is spiritual, it is something that transforms itself into physical. All they've been teaching you is how the Holy Ghost is just a spiritual thing. Nobody has told you that the Holy Ghost, the anointing, can become a material thing, a financial thing, a house, a car, a jet, having kids that you cannot have. Nobody has told you that the Holy Ghost for battle could become, could turn you into an incredible hulk. Change you into a different human being. Let me give you an example. Legions of demons invaded the life of a man. In Mark chapter 5, what did the Bible say? The man who was living at the cemetery, they could not even chain him. They couldn't even lock him up with a chain. Do a normal human being do that? You lock a man up with a chain and he breaks it into pieces. Do normal people do that? No. no. Because there is a strange force. That man is anointed with the anointing of demons. In the same way, we can be anointed with the supernatural anointing from heaven to break chains. I want you to begin to know that this thing we are telling you is not just a spiritual thing. It's a physical thing. Because you are going to be put in a situation that you will be forced to see it. Somebody in your family will die suddenly. And the Holy Spirit will tell you, go and raise that person. Hallelujah. And you're going to be there. Huh? Let me go and open my Bible and see how they did it. Hey, hey, hey. And you start crying and the person die. Pee, and go. And people will talk you out of it. Don't go and disgrace yourself. All those things are stories in the Bible for, for the priests and prophets to use and make money. It doesn't, it's just a story. <laughs> and if you are smart enough, you go to the person and say, listen, the name of Jesus, you better get out of that place before I come and whoop your butt. You are not, you are not living you are not living and living your job that you are supposed to do. And going to heaven for free. Let me catch you going to heaven. Look at your mouth. Look at your ugly face like you are going to heaven. Come and stand out there in the name of Jesus. And the person coughed and rose up. Hey, why did you stop me from, I was going to this beautiful place. I just shut up and come out of that coffin. And everybody's on the run. So there's nothing to be run. There's nothing to run here. There's nothing to run here. This is normal for us. Come out of that place. While you were alive, you never bought a suit for yourself. While you are dead, people went and bought a suit and put you. Look at your big old head and your big old belly. Come out of that place. Let's go. Hallelujah. You want to die. Let me catch you dying. If you ever try it again, you'll see what I'll do to you. Look at your head like a furniture. <laughs> Want to come and die and leave your 10 children, 10 kids that you've had from how many women? You think I don't know? You've been going about sowing your wild seed all over the place. Why not leave me with your responsibility and go to heaven for free? Don't ever try that again. I'm going back to the plane. You enter your plane and go your way. 
Because a lot of people have learned that the easiest way to run away from their responsibility is to die. Don't let people use debt to try to frighten you. Bring them back and let them come and do their job. You want me to come and I'm taking care of everybody and now I'm coming to be taking care of your wife and your children and everything and you die for free and go to heaven. Ah, ta, 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 let me catch you doing that again. Because that's what, that's what a lot of people do. They want to take their life and run away from problems as though they are the only ones who are depressed who have problems in the world. And you allow them to die and go for free. And go and live in heaven and be looking at you, taking care of their responsibilities. Chai. Florence, where are you? Yeah. Verse number? 36. 36, let's go. Okay, read that place again. Okay, let me let me share this with you before you read it again. It was until the Holy Ghost for battle, for success, there is what we call the Holy Ghost for deliverance, for military warfare. So you are now seeing that the Holy Ghost is not just given. He's given for so many reasons. There are people who have Holy Ghost for Physical battle. Warfare. There are those, there are times that the Holy Ghost will arouse in you to be a king. David had it for worship. He had it for dancing. He had the Holy Ghost for warfare. He had the Holy Ghost to be a seasoned king. He had the Holy Ghost for compassion. He had it all. Samson had the Holy Ghost just for battle. He did not have the Holy Ghost for a lot of other things because he was a stubborn and rebellious person. So the Holy Ghost only operated on him as a judge and as a warrior. And that's it. Because he was a naturally stubborn person. So the Holy Ghost could not operate in his fullness. The Holy Ghost just operated in the area of battles so that he can deliver Israel. And when once you hear the Holy Ghost come upon those kind of people, they will kill either an animal, they will destroy anything in their path, whether it's spirit or whatever, will take off and run. It was from the time David never killed animals. He never killed, when I say animals, I mean lions and bears. Nobody in his Normal sense will see a lion and a bear come and take one of the lamb, one of your flock, and you will go after that, bare-handed. You must be crazy. He was telling Saul, I'm already a day devil. I'm a day devil angel. When the lion came and the bear came to take one of the lamb to go and eat, the spirit of the Lord Charged me into battle. And I went after that lion like a lion. And I killed that lion. Why do you think David ran to go and see the battle? To go and see the army arrayed, arranged for battles. Because he had begun to experience uncommon kind of physical strength that is not common to human beings. What he heard happened to Samson was happening to him. And his family members knew about it. Eliab knew about it. They've eaten the lion, they've eaten the bear that David slew. They were afraid. David's family members were afraid of David because they knew what he was capable of doing 
as a young man that David wasn't a, a David was not just a young man. David was more than human. We are talking about supernatural warfare. Today is Friday and I'm bringing this to you. Stop trying to be human only. You need the other side of you to kick in. And only the Holy Ghost, the anointing, kick that in. Everybody is running away. And the Spirit of God take over you. You stood your ground. You charge head on. Say, bring it on. Amen. Lion, drop the lamp. And the lion rule after you. Who are you? That I cannot eat whatever I want. You will also be a meal. And the Spirit of God charged into you. And you take him on and keep him in his place, dead. And then you call your family members to come and drag that, that sucker down to the house and make a feast of him on a Friday night. The family saw that. They knew what they were dealing with. Read, read, read that verse for me. Read the verse number 36. Read number 36. Thy, ser thy, thy servant, huh? Yes. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. You see that? He will be to me. So you see, what he was trying to do, because all that we hear in the story is how David used a slingshot and hit him, and the Spirit of God was acting at that point. No. Since the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, mighty things started to happen to David. Anyone who attacked anything that belonged to David or to his family was in trouble. That's what we are learning here. Including lion, a lion and a bear. And I see why. After that, the father was too happy to let David supervise. Because there was someone that that helped keep the ship when David was not around. <sighs> Goliath is going to be, I know that Goliath is strong, but I'm going to make him to be. Goliath and a lion, who stand a chance in a physical combat? A bear, a lion, and Goliath, who stand a chance? Goliath do not stand a chance with a lion. You know it. Goliath do not stand a chance with a bear. You know it. And since what is in me can produce this result, therefore I'm going to reproduce this result in Goliath. You see, faith is not stories. It's not a make-believe. You are not being told to just believe something. You are told to believe it because of the facts. There is already trends happening. And you know it. You've experienced it. Now you can do it some more. That's what faith is about. Stop trying to think that faith is something that you are just forced to do. Check the record. Sacred scriptures and the gospel is a book of facts. Check how they did it. And go and reproduce it. That's why you are asked to do supernatural warfare. If Samson did it, you can do it. If David did it, you can do it. Hallelujah. 
I was with I was with this big guy that I was training in one of the states. And we were in this big estate. And I was coaching him on how he's going to be a man. So I gave him a time for him to walk around. I took him on a walking trail the whole day. From 10 o'clock in the morning till 5. I take, I take people out for a walking trail. And I talk to them about different things so that you can be a woman or you can be a man. On a walking trail, people are passing by us. Sometimes they listen to what I'm telling the person. We'll stop for a lunch and then we continue. So he, he, I gave him his time for him to go on his own, walk and meditate and think. We will meet again in the next. Then I saw him running towards me. The two cobras are chasing him. Jeez. And truly, I saw big, tall, long cobra. Two of them. In Florida. And they are running after him. And he's running very fast towards me. He's shouting. Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. There is a snake coming after me. And then I ran towards him. And the two snakes saw me. Coming. I told him, go on my left. And the snake took back. They saw me coming towards them and they take off and they ran. I chased after them, they went. He, the guy turned around and said, bloody hell, what was that? What just happened? I said to him, like, how? He said, why did the snake run, run away from you? I said, because you don't have what I got. Amen. See, the, the thing, this is how it goes. It seizes you in a second, what we are talking about. It comes upon you in a second. Bam! And you are a different human being. You don't go with your senses at that time. You are a spirit at that time. Somebody wanted to shoot and kill my sister and her son. And my sister was so desperate, she called me that night and said, this is what is going on. I said, leave it with me. I'll take care of it right away. Instantly, heaven possessed me. Bam! And I ran to the altar and I roared. I didn't pray. I just roared three times. And the spirit left me. And I call her, I said, it's over with. Five, six, seven o'clock, that man was packing his things and run away till today. Never came back. Yeah. Amen. I'm serious. When the Spirit of God seizes you, don't try to go with your head. Go with the Spirit. Don't worry, people might think you are crazy. Is this Pentecostal thing? Don't worry about it. You will be the one laughing and smiling for women and they will still be in their rubbish. <laughs> they will still be where they are and you are out of it and gone. Hmm. I'm going to make this man like the lions that I've killed before. That was what makes Saul say, Really? You've killed a lion? Bear on it? Like Samson, he said, yes, I did. You've killed a bear? Yes, I did. Ask my brothers. They are your soldiers. Why was that not told to me? Hey, 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 hey. Eliab, Abinad of Shama, come here. Did your little brother kill a lion and a bear? Yes, he did. Okay, you can go. Read verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of his Philistine. And Saul said unto 
David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. No, no, no. And Saul said what? What did Saul say? Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now Saul is remembering the Lord. <laughs> He has seen fact. This guy killed a bear. This guy killed a lion. That was when Saul knew that his throne has a question mark. This guy might be coming for his throne. That was the day Saul knew. This guy is coming for my throne. You never heard of the lion and the bear story until you heard that David was consecrated, anointed, and the Holy Ghost came upon him from that day forward. And now Saul was convinced. This is the one thing you need to succeed in life is the anointing for battle. Is the one thing you need so that when false people come your way, come into your organization, come into your job, you go to your place, your own hidden sanctuary, and stay there, and groan, and roar, and the next day they start resigning, or they start being fired, so that you can stay there and do your job. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan is not happy that you can pay your bill, and still have investment, and still have a saving. He's not happy. He's not happy that somebody divorced you or separated from you and you are still laughing. You are still making money. You were supposed to be so traumatized that you die as a result of it. You think they're happy with you that you're happy? Things are made, things are done against you so that you perish. Now, now Saul is remembering the Lord be with you. You can now go and fight him. David now become the mascot of Israel. <laughs> Read the next verse. Verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail. Continue. Verse 39. He's siding with heaven to go ahead with what is in the book. Because that's how God does his business. God does not just break into the earth. He will, he will find somebody who will side with him so that he can do what